Let me start this video with a question. Let's say if you want to visit or study space, which organization will you approach? I know almost 99% of you have said NASA. But you will be shocked to know that apart from the USA, 72 other nations have their own space agencies. We will be discussing some of them in this video, so stay tuned. Almost everyone is curious to know what lies outside the Earth. What are stars? Does anyone live in space? And how big is the universe? In the 21st century, many remarkable feats in the astronomy landscape have been achieved. As I mentioned, almost 72 nations have space agencies, 14 have half the launch capacity, and only 6 have full launch capability. These agencies have the capabilities to launch multiple rockets into space simultaneously. The first agency that we're going to be discussing is JAXA. JAXA is a Japanese aerospace exploration agency. Japan entered the space race soon after World War II, but Japan didn't have any space agency for too long. Then, in 1967, Japan signed the Outer Space Treaty. Soon after that, Japan established three space agencies. These three space agencies were merged into a single space agency, JAXA. Japan failed badly in its first launch in 1969, whereas in 1970, Japan successfully launched its first space mission. JAXA became popular because of its Hayabusa mission in 2003. The mission revealed details about an asteroid, Ryugu, that was 300 million kilometers away from the Earth. Now, JAXA is working on a human space program and reusable launch vehicles, and it is planning to send a humanoid robot to the moon. Also, JAXA is working on the Moon Manned Mission 2025. Second, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, is on the list. Established in 1958, NASA achieved a remarkable feat in cosmology. It is the only space agency that visited exoplanets like Jupiter and Saturn back in 1972 when no one could have imagined. Celestial bodies like infinite galaxies, star clusters, supernovas, and megastructures like nebulas, NASA was the first space agency that introduced humans to space outside this world. It won't be an exaggeration to say that if we know about stars and galaxies today, the credit goes to NASA's Hubble Space Telescope. These two beautiful photos that you can see on your screens are pictures of the Helix Nebula and Eagle Nebula captured by the Hubble Telescope. As you may know, America was the first country to send a human to the moon, Neil Armstrong. There is a heavy cost attached to all these expeditions. According to recent estimates, the American government spends $20 billion on NASA. This is space related, but do you know that NASA manufactures other things? What are these things? Well, NASA has made scratch-resistant eyeglass lenses, artificial limbs to assist people in walking, memory foam, and water filters. Initially, NASA prepared these utilities for its astronauts. Later, they made them public. Next on the list is an intergovernmental space agency, the European Space Agency. The 22 European countries established it in 1975. These were Austria, Belgium, Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Ireland, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Spain, Sweden, and Switzerland. Its headquarter is in Paris, and last year, its budget was approximately $7.5 billion. Venus Mission of 2005, Rosetta Mission of 2004, Mars Mission, and Kuro Space Telescope are some of the special missions of ESA. Currently, ESA is making the world's first space junk collector that will be launched in 2025, and it will collect the debris of space rockets and satellites. Cleet Space One is the name of the mission. A four-handed robot will assume the responsibility to clear space junk. It is important to remove the debris in space as it may cause hurdles for future expeditions. ESA is going to spend $9.43 billion on the mission. NASA took two attempts to reach Mars. Do you know which country's space shuttle landed on Mars in its very first attempt? It's ISRO, an Indian Space Research Organization. Before 1965, ISRO was under the Indian Nuclear Department. After that, these two agencies were separated. India landed on Mars in its first attempt in 2014. They spent only $75 million on the mission. 
If you can see it in comparison, the Hollywood movie The Guardians of the Galaxy was made for $175 million, so it was the most economical mission to Mars. ISRO stands among the top seven space agencies. It was established in 1969, before the Russian and Chinese space agencies. Almost all countries need Indian assistance to send their missions to space, as India has the world's most advanced launching vehicles called PSLV rockets. These are the most economical space rockets. It only requires a country to have $54 million to send its mission into space. Therefore, various countries approach ISRO to launch their satellites. ISRO claims a world record of launching 104 satellites into space simultaneously. In 2008, Chandrayaan-1, the mission launched by ISRO, proved the presence of water on the moon in the form of ice. Let's see how much the Indian government spends on ISRO annually. The United States spent 20 billion on NASA. India only spends 1.5 billion. Where India spends 1.5 billion and the United States spends 20 billion annually on its space agencies. You must be wondering, how much does China spend? Well, it spends 11 billion on its space agency, CNSA. China's National Space Administration got established in 1993, almost 36 years after the establishment of NASA. Despite coming this late, CNSA is ranked second on the list of leading space agencies. From 1993 to 2020, CNSA launched 2,666 satellites into space. Do you know what that means? 13.6% of satellites in space are Chinese. Although NASA was the first to send a space station, it did so with the help of other countries. China, however, solely sent its space station Tiangong-1 in 2000. On the 23rd of July, 2020, CNSA successfully launched the Tianwen-1 mission to Mars. It landed on Mars in April 2021. It's a robotic spacecraft that will help CNSA understand land on Mars's features. China hasn't stopped there. They have some serious plans for the future. By 2030, CNSA plans to make spacecraft that can observe Jupiter and Saturn closely. It will study gas giants and Neptune's orbit closely. It will reveal more details about the solar system. Next, we have a National Center for Space Studies. This French space agency was formed in 1961. In comparison, the annual budget of CNES is $2.5 billion. The main focus of CNES is five key areas. One, civil application of space. Two, access to space. Three, science and technology research. Four, sustainable development. And five, security and defense. The agency is currently developing a reusable launch vehicle with the assistance of the German Space Agency. The thought behind reusable launch vehicles is to bring down cost. They're also developing formation flying. It helps to maintain multiple satellites coordinated and their heavy components in controlled configuration. CNES, in coordination with IRO, has deployed a megatropic satellite that's observing the water cycle within the context of climate change. Next, we have Roscosmos the Russian Federal Space Agency. RFSA was established on the 25th of February, 1992. It had been referred to as the Soviet space program before that. Roscosmos has achieved a lot in these years, like the first intercontinental ballistic missile was developed by this agency. Similarly, the world's first satellite was also developed by Russia. The first female astronaut, the first male, and the first animal were sent into space by Roscosmos. The first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, was launched by Russia. Space exploration slowed down a bit after the disintegration of the Soviet Union, but Roscosmos has again gathered some pace. Their future plans include a Mars mission and a robotic space program. However, Russia and USA launched an international space station in 1988. But Russia is looking forward to establishing its own national space station by 2025 and it might pull out of the ISS. Now, let's talk about DLR, the German Aerospace Center. Having an annual budget of over $2.5 billion, DLR focuses on space, aeronautics, transport, energy and security. In terms of energy and security, the agency is looking forward to generating ultra-efficient, low carbon dioxide power generation and thermal generation resources. DLR is looking forward to maintaining mobility 
environmental sustainability, and enhancing transportation safety in the future. Some notable projects include a global navigation system, Galileo Mars Express, and shuttle radar. Since Sputnik was launched in 1957, 8,650 objects have been launched into space by different countries. In the future, the number of artificial satellites will cross 12,000. It will pose serious challenges to space governance as more and more stakeholders are getting involved in space exploration yearly. How will it shape the future of the human race and will it be beneficial? Only time will tell. You must have noticed one thing in this video. Small countries like Italy, Estonia, and Luxembourg are investing in establishing their space presence. In terms of annual budget, NASA is still a leading space agency. But the way CNSA, JAXA, and Roscosmos are catching up to it, no one could ascertain that NASA would continue to enjoy its dominance. Further private companies, like SpaceX, run by Elon Musk, are working on cost-efficient commercial space flights, so the future looks promising and competitive. This is the end of today's video. Hope you've gained something substantive out of it. Thanks for watching.